So when my son was in junior and in high school, uh, junior high and high school, he would drag me down to Soho in New York and we'd go off to these uh, small stores. One was called Off-White, another one was Supreme. Uh, and listen, I got to tell you, we would buy these expensive T-shirts and I, I had a little frustration paying 100 bucks for a T-shirt, but I did get, they had a lot of style and a lot of flair. And then my son told me the story of Virgil Abloh, the founder of Off-White, whose meteoric career landed him a job as menswear at the diner at the Louis Vuitton. You know, my son then ran into Abloh at Dover Street Market in London. This is in 2017. And for him, it was a dream come true. Virgil was nice and encouraged him to follow his dreams. Virgil, of course, is the kind of small business success story that we all need to hear and share because it's so inspirational. I want people to dream big, and I, and I think it helps when you can follow dreamers that climbed obstacles and saw no limits. At this very moment, my son is putting on an art display at Art Basel right now. By the way, tomorrow, Louis Vuitton is going to have a special tribute to uh, Virgil Abloh, who, by the way, was only 41 years old when he passed away over the weekend. I want to bring in Carol Roth now because, Carol, you and I are always looking out for small business heroes. And just your thoughts. Yeah, so obviously, if you are a fashionista or like I am from Chicago, you know that this is just a devastating loss. Uh, Mr. Abloh was a creative visionary, and from a small business standpoint, I think the real takeaway is that he always challenged the norms. He didn't say, this was the way things were done before, so it has to be done the same way in the future. He forged that new path. And he also fashioned himself a maker. You know, he saw business as art and art as business, and he lived that way. So as a huge loss, um, but I think that he is going to have this legacy and this path that he's carved out that many entrepreneurs and artists are going to be able to follow. I think so as well. I want to talk to you about the SBA because they're in a lot of pressure right now. Small businesses are complaining about the difficulties accessing funds. By the way, they're only open for another month. And I know this is something you've been living about. You've been warning us about this. So what's going on? <laughs> What's going on? That is the billion dollar question for so many uh, small business owners across the country. Charles, everything that the government and the SBA has touched uh, since March of last year in regards to small business has been an epic disaster. From the restaurant relief funds that were found to be done on a, discriminatory, a discriminatory basis and then pulled so women and minority-owned businesses lost their money instead of going out and getting more. To this current EIDL situation, you know, the technology, the hoops that they have to jump through, small businesses are so frustrated and they have to be focusing on their customers they have labor issues they right. have supply chain issues they have inflation issues all caused by the government the last thing they need to do is jump through these additional hoops if you look at these crony businesses that got relief funds many of them just got a check so why do small businesses have to go through all of this brain damage go through all of these hoops unless you don't really care. And unfortunately, I think that's it. There are some businesses that are too big to fail. And for small businesses in this country, they're just considered too small to matter. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's, it's a shame, but I, I hate to say I, I do agree with you that it's just collectively there's no voice, even though they create all the most of the new jobs in this country. I was in a toy store yeah. uh, for Small Business Saturday. I saw a bunch of action figure dolls, right? They had Biden, Harris, Bernie, and Fauci. Uh, but they didn't sell any. It looks like they all were there. None of them have been sold. So if I can have your permission, I want to ask uh, the story uh, to sell your action figure doll. <laughs> <laughs> well, as somebody who has my own action figure, I'll put, it, put it up here. Um, you're supposed to do an action figure of a hero, not a zero. So maybe that's not why, why they weren't selling. Uh, but I, one of the things a lot of people don't know with me is via my own small business, I'm partnered with another small business, Integrity Toys. I do a lot of work with them. They make collectible dolls, and they actually made my action figure for a book that I put out more than 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah. And unfortunately, I can't get them anymore, but I could probably find one for you, Charles. Oh, you can find them on the secondary market. Just in time for Christmas. Carol, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Always appreciate it.